Ronan said he wanted to look at, at these and looking at the, uh, the temperature records and seeing uh, how real were they and uh, we looked at them and we thought that there was some problems we noticed right away. For example, one of the problems that we noticed was um, a thing called the urban heat island effect. Uh, how the world's temperature is determined every year is there are about 7,000 stations around the world in which they get the average temperature for the year for each of those stations and then they do a, uh, a, a gridded average for all those 7,000 stations to try and come up with a world temperature. But what we noticed was that over half of the stations they were using were in urban areas. But the urban areas only account for 1% of the uh, size of the planet. So we said this seemed to have been a bias. And it, it has been known since the, almost since temperature, uh, thermometers were invented that urban areas were warmer than rural areas. Uh, urban areas have concrete and that which absorbs the sunlight, whereas the rural areas have lots of uh, um, grass which evaporates off water and keeps it cool. And so where we are, we in Dublin, it's been well known that Dublin City, for example, is one degree warmer than County Dublin because of the urban heat island effect. Um, so uh, what we said was, well, hang on a second, urban areas have been increasing and expanding. And uh, for example, in Dublin, the, uh, there are, in Ireland, there are 11, there were, at the time we were started looking at 11 climate stations uh, that uh, people considered. And when, say one of the ones out in Dublin Airport in the 1930s, there wasn't an airport there, it was just a field. And the same occurred for the one in, in the, the uh, weather uh, uh, meteorological headquarters in Glasnevin. That was in a, a garden, and now it's on the roof of a three or four story building. So, uh, but at the same time, there were stations that were way out, for example, Valencia. Uh, is down in Kerry on the seashore where it has been taking the temperature there since the 1800s. Uh, and when we, when we looked at that particular one, we found that the temperature uh, had been rising up until the 40s and then cooling down until about the uh, 70s and then it was heating up to the 40s and then uh, or to 2000 and then it seemed to be steady or slightly declining. But the ones from Dublin uh, were rising through the roof because Dublin city was expanding, the airport had grown, there's now, it's a huge airport with 20 million uh, people going through it every year. So we said, well, is this, <coughs> should we look at this phenomenon and see as a repeated worldwide? So what we did was we, uh, we divided the stations into all the ones that were rural uh, and all the ones that were urban and when we did the same analysis, instead of treating the t them as two different uh, bodies, we did them as each separately, we found that for the rural stations, we were getting the self-same phenomenon, whether we were looking at the Arctic, whether we were looking at the rural stations here in America, and uh, 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 in various places. So uh, at this particular stage, uh, Ronan said, well, you know, we, we better write this up. Um, and so he started looking at that and analysing the world stations to see if we could get uh, an idea with that. And at that particular stage, I said, well, hang on, is there any set of data that we could look at that isn't being affected by an urban bias? And at that particular stage, I realised, well, all the balloon data, uh, that's not uh, going to be affected by urban bias. It might be uh, at ground level, but once it gets up above where the uh, air would be affected, even if they were in urban areas, uh, we might be able to get some estimate. And because they were sampling all the way up to the stratosphere, I said, if there is a carbon footprint, if there is a great greenhouse heating effect here, we should see it here. Uh, so just to get back to, uh, you, I think you want, wanted me to talk a bit about uh, the urban, uh, rural urban temperature profiles. Um, when we wrote up that particular thing on it, uh, we contacted Willie Soon and Willie Soon uh, said he'd been finding something similar with the uh, uh, solar output. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's when we decided to collaborate on that, three, uh, that, that uh, uh, one that we did in, in 2015. And what we found there was, uh, again, just summarizing it, um, we found that the rural temperature record 
seem to be repeating one of the eight or so uh, solar estimate estimates um, and we found that that wasn't being uh, taken into account uh, by uh, the computer modelers. They, were, they had been told uh, to only look at four particular flat type of solar outputs, uh, which um, seemed to me to be a bizarre sort of limitation to put on things, only looking at one type of uh, uh, data set instead of looking at them all.